What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be going over UI collection view, the list view, the thing that essentially looks like a table view but it's a collection view. And it's actually pretty simple, so we're gonna actually go through that today. Now, the reason why I wanted to cover this, and I think that it's so important, is because a lot of people think that UI table view will actually be deprecated next year or soon in the future. So this is why it's important that you get very familiar with UI collection view if you plan on using UI kit in the foreseeable future. So with all that said, let's go ahead and let's jump right on in. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into what we currently have going on in the project real quick, just so that you guys have an idea of what is currently set up and what is not set up. So I'm actually going to be going through this tutorial all programmatically. You can still follow along if you choose to use storyboards, but I think it's important that we also take a look at different ways that we could implement um, our projects. And I wanted to show you how to do something programmatically as well. So let me know if you want to have more tutorials going over programmatic stuff or if you're still looking to have more tutorials using storyboards. All right, jumping in, all we're going to do is just the default setup when you're working with the scene delegate project and that's going to go ahead and create the scene, add the window, we're going to create our view controller, throw it into a navigation um, a navigation controller and then set that uh, navigation controller to the root view controller of the window going into our view controller as you can see super simple setup right now all i'm doing is turning the background red and we're getting our users we're using a networking request the reason why i'm showing it through a networking request is because i'm actually going to use this project in a follow-up video um, covering something else but get your data however you want to get it and essentially we're getting users we're printing out those users and we're printing out error if we don't get those users as you can see the user object is extremely simple straightforward networking service do not model your your networking service like this but this is the networking service simply getting data and returning back data so very simple very straightforward um, going back over to the project and just so that you can see what it looks like let's go ahead and run the project and as you can see, pretty much everything that I described, we just have this red background. We have the navigation controller showing users, and then we also have our users being printed out in the logs. All right, so the first thing that I wanna do is I actually wanna create a view file that's going to be responsible for controlling what this view looks like for my view controller. So let's go ahead and create a new file now. All right, now that we have a view class and this is going to be the view that's actually presented in our view controller, let's go ahead and set it up and make sure that we're actually seeing this view present in our view controller real quick. All right, so as you can see in the initialize method, I'm just calling super.init and then I'm calling setup. Setup here is all, all it's going to do right now is going to change the background to blue to make sure that everything is working as expected. Let's go back over to our view controller and add this into the load view method. All right, so as we can see, we create an instance of our main view, which we just created on the other screen. We're setting it equal to our view. So now our view is actually going to be an instance of our main view. And we removed the view dot background color is equal to red just so that we are not changing the color. So if everything works as expected, our background should now be blue. Perfect. So if you aren't familiar with this concept of using a custom view as the view, all we're going to do is we're going to treat this like our storyboard file, which means that all of our visual elements, in this case, our collection view is actually going to be put onto the main view and it's going to be presented there. So let's go ahead and add our collection view to our main view. All right, so as you can see, we have this lazy variable called collection view of type UI collection view. And in these curly braces, all we're going to do is create a new collection view and configure it to however we want it to be and then return that collection view. Okay, so as you can see here, we're creating an instance of a collection view with the frame of zero and the collection view layout, I actually have left blank. Um, we don't have anything there. Um, and I'm gonna talk about that right now. So as you can see right here, all I'm saying is that we're gonna be using auto layout and that we want the background to be a light gray, so this system grouped background color. And then we're gonna return that collection view. 
All right, so as you can see, we need to pass in some type of layout, right? And this is where the juicy part comes in, where we're actually going to be creating the list layout. And all we have to do is create a tongue twister. And what I mean by tongue twister is UI collection view compositional layout. I mean, that's kind of hard to say several times fast. So let's go ahead and try to create an instance of that. All right, so now that we have this UI collection view compositional layout, if we do dot syntax, then what we have down here is this list. Now this is going to be the list layout that we're looking for that's going to kind of act like table view, right? So this is what we're looking for, and it's just um, uh, either a class method or a static method, I'm not really sure which one, but uh, all we need is to create some type of configuration. So in order to create our collection view, we need to create a compositional layout, and in order to create that list layout, we need a configuration. So let's create that configuration. All right, so as you can see, the configuration is going to be of type UI collection layout list configuration. Um, lots of tongue twisters here. And uh, if you go ahead and do dot, what you're going to actually see are a couple of different styles. Now, you can go through and take a look at these different styles. Um, the one that we're going to be using today is that inset group where like all the all the rows are actually kind of in their own little um, you know, squircle looking group. And that seems to be the way that Apple wants UI to kind of start heading towards is like these little small sectioned groups, these inset groups. Um, but if you were to go back to plain or grouped or even use sidebar, I believe it's going to have the more traditional uh, table view layout look to it. But let's go ahead and go with inset grouped. So now that we have our configuration, we could pass it into our layout. And now that we have our layout, we could pass it into our collection view. So what I have to do now is I need to make sure that I add this collection view to my main view, uh, just like we would in storyboards. So I want to drag this collection view into my main view and make it a sub view. And then I want to make sure that I stretch it out so that it's fitting all the sides of my main view. So let's do that now. All right, so as you can see, I created this function called setup subviews, pretty straightforward. And we're going to add the collection view as a subview to our main view. And then we're just going to activate these constraints. So all I'm going to do is make sure that top left or leading trailing and bottom are equal to the top leading trailing and bottom of our main view. And as long as we're calling that in our init method, then all of those constraints will be activated. So let's go ahead and go back over to our view controller so in order to actually populate the data that's coming in from our networking request right here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set up our collection view, which is a sub view of our main view, right? So let's go ahead and create a function that's going to set up our collection view before we actually get these users and start populating data. All right, so we have the setup collection view method, right? And we're calling it in view did load. Simple, straightforward. Now what we want to do is use the new cell registration method that's provided to collection views that's going to allow us to um, register cells for our collection view. And then um, we're going to be able to take that registration and we're going to be able to use that registration when we're dequeuing the cell, which is going to happen in our diffable data source. So let's go ahead and create the registration and then go back over that. All right, so as I said before, we're creating this new registration object using the new APIs to create this cell registration, right? And cell registration is generic. And in order to actually create a new instance of a cell generation object, what we need to do is we actually need to pass in the type of cell that we're going to be using and we need to pass in the object that we're going to be using. So as you can see, I'm going to be using this new UI collection view list cell. Once again, a new object that's been provided to us through iOS 14 and we're going to be using our user object. Now, this opens up this closure, which is going to pass in the cell. In this case, it's going to be an instance of our UI collection view list cell. And then we have the index path as usual. 
and a user object that's passed in, right? So from there, since we have this closure, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new instance of this default content configuration. And if you option click it, you can actually see that this is a UI list content configuration object, and it's just returning the default instance of this. And I believe that this simply comes with just like an image and a title. There's a couple of other different instances of these that you can kind of explore and play with that may have like a subtitle or have like semi different layouts, just depending on what you're trying to do. But we're going to go for the most basic instance of this list cell, right? All we're going to do is present the user's name. So as you can see, this content object has a property called text on it. And we're simply going to set that text to the user's name. Once we do that, now we want to pass in this content object into our content configuration property, which is now um, located on the cell. So I believe that it does have to be a list view cell or um, a custom cell that does conform to a specific protocol in order to have this content configuration. So um, as long as you're using the list cell or um, a, a custom cell that conforms and has content configuration, you would essentially pass that content in to the content configuration. It's very similar to a view model um, pattern. So if you're familiar with view models, this content is essentially like your view model. All right, great. So now that we are essentially passing in our view model into our cell, and it knows how to populate itself, all we need to do is just simply register the cell, making sure that we are using um, a diffable data source to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a diffable data source that's going to um, create, or going to handle essentially a section. We'll just create a just a simple single section, and it's going to be handling our user. So let's do that now. All right, so as you can see, we have our UI collection view diffable data source, and it's taking on a section, which is our new object that I put down here in an, in an extension. Um, it's just simply an enum called section, and it only has one case, which is main. And we're using an enum because enums are by default hashable. Now, we're actually getting an error right here, and you'll actually see that user is, um, it's complaining about the user because user is not currently hashable. So we're going to have to go back and fix that right now. But um, moving forward, before we do that, we have to initialize this diffable data source with a collection view. From there, I'm just using the main views collection view, right? And then in this closure that's provided afterwards, we have the collection view that is um, being passed in, and then we have the index path and the item. In this case, this is actually going to be, once again, a user. So we're going to be passing in a user. And then all we need to do is return the cell. And this will actually be extremely simple. But before we do that, let's make sure that we're making user hashable. So let's jump back over to the user object. And we're just going to simply add an extension that says that it's hashable. All right, perfect. So now if we go back over here, Xcode's going to stop complaining and whining at us. And we should actually see that um, we do get syntax highlighting back eventually one of these days sometime in the future. Um, all right, there it goes. From here, it's just a one liner. Since since this uh, closure is expecting a cell to come back, all we need to do is simply DQ a reusable cell. And we're going to make sure that we use this registration to do that. So let's do that now. All right, so we have our one liner in here and this DQ configured reusable cell, as you can see, it's taking in a registration, it's taking an index path and it's taking in an item and that's going to return the cell. So now we have the cell being registered properly. There's no additional setup that we need since we're only working with one section and only one type of cell, which is the UI collection view list cell. But we do need to hang on to the reference of this uh, diffable data source. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and copy this and we're going to go up to the top and make sure that we have a property called data source, which is going to hang on to that instance. So as you can see, I have this data source. It's going to be the same type UI collection view diffable data source. And we just set that equal to this uh, diffable data source that we're creating right here. 
All right, so now, as you can see, we pretty much are done setting up our collection view. We have the cell registration going on. We have it um, dequeuing the reusable cells. All we need to do is simply make sure that we're creating a snapshot every time we want to use one of these users. So whenever we want to populate this collection view with users, we just create a new snapshot. So let's do that now. Oh yeah, that's clean. So as you can see, we have this new populate function, which is going to take in a couple of users, right? And what we want to do is we want to create this new snapshot. Now, if you are not familiar with this API, you can go watch the video that I recorded on Diffable Data Source um, that goes into a little bit more detail. But as you can see, we're just creating a snapshot. Um, we're specifying the section type and the user type. And then we're just going to simply make sure that we're saying we want to add these snapshots in these sections. So it's just an array of this single um, section right here. And we want to append those items, which are our users, and then we want to apply that snapshot to our diffable data source, which once again is essentially associated with all this code right here, more specifically the UI diffable data source initialization method right here. So once we actually call self.populate in our get users method, what we're going to see is that it's going to run all this code and we should see that our our users are populated in our collection view. So let's go ahead and run that. And there it is, oh my G. So it's pretty cool looking at our users. And as you can see, this is the inset group. If you wanna go ahead and take a look at what the other one might look like, let's go ahead and go back over to our main view and we could just uh, change this to something else. Um, you know, we could just do plain. And that might be something that you're a little bit more familiar with if you want to see what a regular list view looks like. But you could just go ahead and play with the different styles and um, pretty much create a table view now with the collection view. And yeah, it's it's really simple, it's really straightforward. Collection views has never been easier. Oh, yeah. All right. And there you have it. We worked with the UI collection view. We made sure that we used the list layout. We did all the cool things with the list. We saw that, you know, we could have the inset group. We could have the, the normal list layout, just like a table view would look like. We had all of that great stuff in this amazing project. So I hope that you learned something new today. If there's any other topics that you want to have me covered, you know, your boy Kilo Loco, then make sure you leave a comment down below on what you would like to have covered next, whether it's from this year's WWDC or any other topic. I'm willing to help you. So that's going to be it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for your time again. Really, really appreciate it. Make sure you're subscribed. I really like subscriptions. Now go out there and make sure you keep coding passionately. Later.